Imagine this rope, okay? Pretend this rope just goes on forever, okay? Just imagination. Pretend it goes around the world a few times. It doesn't. It ends at the rock. But uh, let's just imagine this thing goes on forever. Now, imagine that this rope is a timeline of your existence. You just exist forever. You see this red part? This would represent your time on earth. You've got a few short years here on earth, and then you've got all of eternity somewhere else. This is, this is your existence. And what blows me away is some of you, all you think about is this red part. It's all you think about. You're consumed with this. You go, oh man, I can't wait till here. You know, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to save, save, save so I can really enjoy this part right here. <laughs> and you're consumed with that. And you're thinking, oh man, am I going to get to travel? Am I going to eat well? Am I going to do this during this part? And I'm like, are you kidding me? What about this? What about this? What about, th- what about all this stuff? It's, just, it's crazy to me because the Bible teaches that what I do during this little red part determines how I'm going to exist for millions and millions and millions of years forever. And, and so why would I spend this little red part trying to make myself as comfortable as possible, enjoying myself as much as I can, Paul says, look, I'm going to live my life for this mission. I'm going to spend my life, invest my life for this moment when I cross that finish line. See, I'm going to forget about all this stuff I could enjoy, and I'm not going to look around. I'm going to be like a runner just looking at that moment when I face God because when I face him, then I don't get this chance over again. We get one chance at this life on earth, and it can end at any second for any of us. We've got one chance at this, and then comes eternity. And I'm not going to be fooled. I'm not going to spend my life down here. See, people look at some of my decisions and go, oh, you're so stupid because that's going to really affect this. I go, no, you're stupid because it's going to affect all of this. <laughs> Man, I, I, I'm serious. I, I look. I look at the way people live and I go, wow, that is so crazy. You are so crazy. You're going you're gonna to do that right now, just to enjoy right now, not even knowing if you have tomorrow and you think that's smart and that I'm dumb, it doesn't make any sense. Paul goes, I'm not going to look around at all this stuff. And it's tempting. It's tempting to all of us. That's what I'm saying. Down here, it's crazy because everyone lives that way. Everyone lives for the red part. No one's thinking about the millions of years afterwards. It's, it's just this crazy deception that we can't get out of our minds. And Paul goes, I'm not doing that. He goes, I keep my eyes on that. I keep my eyes on that finish line, and I'm going to forget what's behind me. I'm not looking around. I'm just going to, I'm straining. He goes, I'm straining forward. I'm like stretching forward for that mark. I'm going to pass this thing. I'm going to live this out, and I'm going to face him. I'm going to come before the judges, and he's going to hand me that trophy. He goes, I'm going to get it. And I haven't gotten there yet. He goes, but you better believe I'm using every muscle, exerting every bit about me, because I'm going to pass that line well. Isn't that phenomenal? So they taught you how to fold the napkins? Yes. Oh, wow. I actually, believe it or not, I know how to fold the uh, Sydney Opera House. I don't believe you. No, no, I really do. I, I, I can totally show you. Stop. I'm very excited. Oh, good evening. Oh, good evening. Have you um, dined, dined with us before? Yes, actually. This is our favorite restaurant. W- welcome back. Uh, no, babe, I'm pretty sure we've never been here before. No. Oh, that's weird. Really? Um, yeah, no. No, we haven't. <laughs> oh. Hold that thought just one second. I'm really, oh, yeah. no, really sorry. Oh, no problem. Yeah. So what would you like to order this? Uh, yes, sir. So you know what? I think I would like to have that salmon. That, that sounds absolutely wonderful. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. Oh, great. Yeah, I really like that. And for you, ma'am? Oh, um, I will have the filet mignon and the New York strip and the eight-ounce sirloin, all medium rare, please. Yes, fantastic. That is a great choice. <laughs> Thank you. I will get those right out to you. Babe, that's, that's kind of a lot of food, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not just ordering for one, you know. Wait, are you? Are you telling me that we're... Are we expecting? Yeah, he'll be here soon. It's a boy? Oh my... Yeah, of Oh my gosh, course. babe, okay, uh, this has got to be... There he is the... now. Wait, Hi. what? Oh, bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Mm. <laughs> 
I ordered for you. Oh, thank you. You know me so well. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry. Do you, do, do you two know each other? Do you yeah, guys... he is my boyfriend from high school. Your, your boyfriend from, from high school? Babe, can I ask you what your boyfriend's doing? <laughs> uh, did I come at a bad time? No! Yeah. <laughs> I really don't see the problem here, Justin. Yeah, I really don't see the problem here. Okay, who are you? Honey, stop, you're embarrassing me. I just wanted us to have one nice night at our favorite restaurant. Okay, first of all, I've never been to this restaurant. And, and second, what is going on? Hey, babe, sorry I'm late. Did I miss anything? Okay, seriously? Hey, you, all right, you, you take your hand off her and you, what is going on? Just sit down. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Angela, is this, is this some kind of joke? Are you, are you actually seeing these guys? Justin, I've known these guys longer than I've known you. Wait, what? Are you seriously jealous right now? Jealous? Angela, in case you forgot, we're married. Okay, and we spend the majority of our time together. I'm, I love you more than any of my other boyfriends. That's why you'll always be my favorite. Your, your favorite? Is, is there anyone else I need to know about? Babe, is there a problem over here? Okay, really, the waiter? No, Dennis, we're All fine. right, seriously, no. Good, food will be right now. Uh, okay, uh, Angela, Angela, all right. These guys need to go, and we need to talk. We're done. I cannot believe this. You are being so selfish. Selfish? I... Why do you always have to make everything about you? You ruined our favorite restaurant. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I've still never been to this restaurant. Yeah. All right. It's a little absurd, but I think you get the point, right? So let me ask you a question, and I really want you to think about this. How many of you would want to be married to someone like that? Nobody? Come on. She's gorgeous. She's got a great personality. All right, why didn't any of you raise your hands? Can I articulate why? Because even though he is her favorite, she spends 90% of her time with him, and she does love him more than any of the other boyfriends, her heart's still divided. Now, you'd never marry someone like that. What makes you think Jesus is coming back for a bride like that? Paul finally has to write to this church that he loves, he birthed. And he said, many, now do you remember he said, for this reason, many of you are weak? Many of you have not given up your old sins, your old boyfriends. You have not repented, everybody say repented, repented. of your impurity, your sexual immorality, and your eagerness for lustful pleasures. New Testament repentance is the Greek word metanoia. It's found over 50 times in the New Testament, and here's its raw definition, a change of mind. It's an about face. That's its definition. But now listen, if I leave it there, we're going to miss the impact of this word because how many of you know that I can change my mind but not be fully persuaded? So I love what Baker does. Baker Encyclopedia brings it a little deeper. It says, repentance is a change in the whole personality. Now I love that definition. Everybody say whole personality. <laughs> so repentance is a change of mind, but it goes deeper. It it goes to the will, it goes to the emotions, it penetrates the heart. It's when we are fully persuaded about something in the very core of our being. What's the difference between the unrepented person and the repented person? The fundamental difference is this. The unrepented person says this in his heart, in the core of his being. I choose what is good, best, and right for my life. The repented person says this. I choose. What God says is good, best, and right for my life. 
No matter what our culture is doing, no matter what is acceptable in society, I choose what God says. That's it. That's repentance. This is not the time to get distracted And this is not the time to go off course This is not the time to lose your focus Got a word to do for the Lord And you cannot afford to lose your way You come too far from where you started so please don't let the time you so be wasted On things that you later regret Wishing you never had Once you realize it wasn't worth it Your destiny Is too important to give up for anything concerts that we've done in the past that we know that you would love to preview and you can find them at the bottom of our screen. 